Hello Tubesters, thanks for joining me at the bench. Uh, this will be a painting tutorial of this 28mm front rank figure. Uh, depicts a 95th rifleman. Uh, so we're going to be painting him in mainly dark greens. Uh, let's have a quick point with a stick. Uh, so we're looking at dark green jacket, dark green trousers. Trousers you could actually paint grey or in the um, that Spanish brown material that was quite popular when the, the original green trousers wore out. Um, I've decided uh, just for ease and uh, just to keep a bit of uniformity on this guy we're going to keep him all dark green. So the paints will mainly be using a Vallejo for this one. Uh, there may be the odd uh, Andrea or Scale 75 but I will probably be mainly sticking to Vallejo, so that's a fairly, fairly easy paint to to, to look for if I actually, if I mention a colour. Um, brushes, let me quick get brushes in so <laughs> into view. Uh, just fill your boots. There's some Winter and Newtons there, and there's a couple of uh, Army painters as well, which are the very very thin ones, the Psycho and all that type of stuff. Uh, I like to use those occasionally for doing uh, numerals and bits and pieces. So they're the brushes, but anything that floats your boat, cheap, expensive, you go for what suits you. So, it, uh, by the way, I will be rambling. Uh, that's just the way I roll. If you've seen enough of my videos by now, you know that's how I go about uh, a video. Uh, th these will hopefully improve as time goes on. I've done a couple of test videos and all have been appalling and I don't expect this one to be uh, much different. Uh, the figure will probably be going out a shot more times than it's in because believe me if you haven't done it before it's quite hard painting and looking at the the camera viewer at the same time. A lot of guys have theirs plugged into a, the computer but I'm a complete technophobe and it takes me years before I can pick up a particular solution. Well as we're talking green trousers I suppose I better tell you what I'm actually painting the what type of green we're actually using. As stated before it's a Vallejo and uh, I'll give you a quick flash of that. See not particularly uh, not particularly good at doing these type of things. Right so here we go. Black green uh, of which I put about two thirds black green and a third uh, black in uh, just to darken it down a touch. Uh, consistency as it's a base colour um, is slightly thicker than I would normally paint with, not by much, um, just uh, helps fill in a few humps and bumps. Uh, the way I paint you will see the odd bit of overspill sometimes more sometimes less uh, I have heard you know other other painters say oh, it doesn't matter about over over painting things however my own view is that you know if you if you if you can learn to paint neat now if you're a newbie then you'll paint a lot you know you'll be you'll, you'll be painting a lot more neater as you as you go on in your painting uh, hobby Uh, speed. Um, I'm a commission painter and I'm really really slow. <laughs> Very slow. Um, I should actually call me paint self the paint, uh, paint slug. My commission, my commission? My uh, commission studio name is Red Fuji Studio. I'm a big fan of the artwork of the uh, Japanese painter Hokazai and uh, named my painting studio which you don't really see any so I mean it's not even on my I will get round to finally putting links up um, inquiry links and things but it's something I don't uh, I don't really think of to be honest with you I just I'm doing the videos mainly because I enjoy doing the videos uh, you could do the the black green on its own I just find a touch of black um, it gives you something else as a as a base to put your your deepest shadows in. 
Uh, there won't be anything fancy here. Again, this is more for people, you know, that are either starting out or or just want to see paint recipes or whatever. Um, there'll be no glazing, um, blending or anything. This is just for the war games table. I mean, obviously you can blend and glaze to your heart's content for the war games table, and I have done, but uh, you know, it's not needed particularly. Um, I've mounted them on a cork base uh, or cork bung. Uh, I do this uh, mainly for my larger figures, but uh, I just thought for the tutorial wise it's easy for me to hold. But I'm quite happy. I normally mount mine on milk bottle tops when I'm doing, uh, you know, I'll normally paint six, six or eight at a time. I find that works for me. Some colours you'll need to go a second application. Uh, the black green with a bit of black in tends, for me, tends to work um, first time unless you've really thinned the paints down. Now we will have a bit of black cuff on this if I remember rightly. I've actually got some. I'm about to sell on and uh, like a mug I've started this tutorial without actually having one in front of me just so I've got to, it won't be exactly the same, I'll be doing metallics on this guy by the way not non-metallics and the others have got a mixture of metallic if I remember rightly and, and non-metallic um, but this guy's going to be metallic all the way around it's just easier to I don't believe I'm the best at non-metallics yet to give anybody, I mean I can give the odd bit of advice but I'm not I'm not good enough to, to really do a painting tutorial on non-metallic. But this guy should have enough variety about him. Because he's got he's got his powder flask, obviously his bread sack. Um, what I like about um, if you're doing these like as a as, as a peninsula type of unit, or you know you could do it for the hundred days, but or for the uh, the American War, um, you you can you can really make these as rough as you want to make them. Really, I mean this guy we've we've made him all green. So what I would normally do if you've got say just a basic unit of twelve of these guys, obviously the majority. Would have uh, would have uh, green jackets and trousers. That gives you that uniformity. You know, people can instantly see these are the 95th rifles by that famous you know dark dark green uh, jackets trousers. But you know, throw in throw in a few uh, brown trousers, uh, the odd grey trousers. Here we go with the overpainting here. There's sometimes you can't, you know, you could swap to a very smaller brush. This is, if I remember, most of them are worn out the numbers, but I think this is a size size zero. Yeah, this one's a size zero. Again, try and get in all the nooks and crannies. We all do it, whether you're a professional or whether you're you're starting out, you will often miss a piece, especially if you're doing. There's no excuse really for me here because I'm doing one figure, but um, there's always that little patch of primer showing through somewhere. at the same time. Now I'm using a wet palette. I'll quick you I've shown wet palette before and you obviously all it's the in thing at the moment I suppose on uh, on uh, painting videos but uh, just so you get an idea and also that you know it doesn't have to be fancy if you're starting out. I've just got a ceramic dish that you chuck peanuts in and stuff at parties. 
and uh, as I'm Johnny No Mates, so I don't have to worry about party, so I can uh, I've nicked it for doing for doing uh, using as a painting uh, palette. It's just I'm just seeing if I if we need anything in this behind the neck and the backpack and the great coat and I might be a touch I'm bound to see something afterwards or you guys will see it on the video that I can't see at the moment there's a touch under the arm there I believe Get that before it dries out. Put him down. Uh, the cords are dark green as well, but as I say, until we get to the the good thing with the wet palette is that's why I was trying to say I do go off at tangents. So I do apologise. Don't worry about the other colours on there. I'm painting a commission at the moment, um, and they're just ones I'm using. Uh, so that's the dark green uh, with the black in it. But a wet palette. You can last for, for days, you know, however long you want to you want to put it aside to. So uh, that that uh, that paint will be fine for going back to painting the cords with afterwards. Right, bear in one moment, and I shall be back with the next stage. Right, guys, next stage. Um, by the way, uh, if you haven't got one, get one of these little. Let's see if we can just backtrack slightly. One of these little travelling hair dryer doobries. Um they they really are invaluable to painting. Yeah, don't get me wrong, if you've got if you've got eight figures then obviously by the time you get back to the end of the production line they've they've, they've dried out, that's the idea of doing them like that. Uh, but I do think it's even for somebody who's as bold as a coot like me, it's the only time I'll ever need a hair dryer, believe me. Uh, but they are invaluable for that that type of thing, just drying drying your figure out. Another thing, Gav's top tip of the day, make sure obviously your excess water is off your your paint ferrule, the metal bit, but also, oh, just done that off the camera, <laughs> wipe the excess paint off either on your, your finger on a bit of paper and that will that will help you not have that telltale um, pear shaped tear teardrop uh, blob of paint at the beginning the minute you put your brush down on, on your figure uh, you'll often find if you try not to put a build up you'll, or you will put a build up of paint if you don't wipe that bit of excess paint off your off your figure first and onto either a piece of towel uh, you'll see often if I'm doing a quick and dirty video um, then I'll just be white. My fingers will be covered in streaks of paint, and that's just where I've I've actually gone and wiped off the the, the excess paint on my finger because uh, it will leave you with a, a like a teardrop effect, a pear shape, whatever you want to call it. Now we're just using the dark green here, so same Vallejo color, which is a. Uh, Zero, uh, seven zero dot nine eight zero, but we'll call it black green. As I say, you can start off with that, but this will putting that bit of black in will just give you that darker, that darker shadow. Now this is where you're thinning your paint now. Um, what I'll do is I'll get some out in a second and just put it on my thumbnail to give you an idea of, of what I'm talking about. Now I won't lie, there may be bits on this that I'm going to have to obviously go over. Uh, my camera's directly under my main painting lamp at the moment and 
it is obviously a slight shadow, you probably can tell by how I'm painting. So I'll I want to check over before I actually uh, go any farther. Obviously, don't be tempted just to. Oh, Great. I'm sorry, guys. It's uh, it's summertime. You will hear anybody that does videos will tell, be apologising. I can't, unfortunately, have all the windows shut. I've actually got them all shut in my painting room. I've turned the fan off, and uh, my dog's most indignant. He's uh, gone. He's gone into like in a cooler area. He was enjoying his fan on him. Now you can just dry brush um, plumes and they come up quite nicely. Uh, I tend not to. Right guys, that is our first highlight. So we've got our dark uh, green with black in at the base and then our dark green as our first highlight. Now just to give an idea of of paint consistency. Let's just see my grubby fingernail. Can we go in shot? Yeah. That's the that's the paint consistency I'm using. So you can see my nail underneath. Apologise for the grubbiness of them. And this was a, this is really another Gav ad hoc video. <laughs> it was oh why not Let's try a third attempt at doing a, a tutorial. So yeah, that's that's the paint consistency you're looking for. Right, uh, I'm I, I, some guys, and I used to do it myself, will go and do the base coat over the entire figure. Um, I don't like to do that. You'll notice, I don't even think I've mentioned it, <laughs> but I put a flesh base uh, colour down uh, on my on my figures before I paint them. It's just an idiosyncrasy of mine. Uh, it doesn't mean anything, you know. It doesn't help you one way or the other. Uh, and I'll I'll talk to obviously the, the base color or the flesh colors uh, when we get round to it. But um, so ignore him for now. That's just I just do that on, on figures. But I don't I don't normally go over anything else. Uh, uh, another idiosyncrasy of mine is quite often I leave the very last base, uh, sorry, the very last highlight on the jackets and trousers. Uh, till I've completely painted the entire figure. Don't ask me why, I do the same on horses. It's just how I roll. Um, but I might well obviously go to the to the full extent here so we've got all our greens covered. So I'll catch you again in a minute. All right guys, uh, that was a break for a slurp of tea. <laughs> you, can't, you can't be a UK painter and not slurp, slurp tea while you're painting. Uh, Right, green now, we're looking next to highlight. This is the Panzer series from Vallejo model. Gav, get it in shot please. 70.823, and that's Luftwaffe Camo uh, Green. Uh, just in, now this is a really old one, um, or one that's seen a lot of use anyway. Here's one that I've got in the wings waiting to take over from it, so that's a bit cleaner, there you go. And that's for our second highlight. All right, let's get ourselves. Uh, I don't know if it's worth getting any closer. There we go. Again, we put our paint in, uh, brush in our paint, and we wipe uh, a slight bit of excess off. Now, obviously, you're not wiping it off to be a dry brushing. Um, it is just uh, to get stop you ending up with a, a blob of paint where you first put your paint uh, paintbrush onto your figure. Now doing dark greens is a bit like doing um, any dark colour as in don't over highlight them. Uh, I, I know you have, this is the constant thing of of you know, this is where we get people arguing the toss over 
you know, colours of uniforms and how dark and how light and things like that. But I've seen, yes, uniforms faded and whatever, but they are supposed to be a, a dark green. And what happens in with uh, not so much large scale figure painting, obviously, because there's a lot of blending and glazing going on, but a lot of uh, historical war games figures that are, you know, going up in, into mass ranks uh, of units and things. People like to see them on the tabletop, and so they they go to town with the highlights, and that's fine, you know. Again, before we you know get so swamped with people saying, "Well, I paint it this way and that way." However, you paint a figure, they're your figures, your paints, your methods. You know, you you do whatever floats your boat. Um, you want to paint this figure bright pink? You know, it's entirely up to you. Um, but most of us that do this, we like to we like to get them looking something like how we think they would look uh, in real time. There's a little turn back here. I keep painting it green, but it's going to be black, I believe, with a, a white piping around the edge. I find this uh, this Luftwaffe uh, camo green is is very nice for dark green colours. Now we're still using the zero here, but I might well go down to get the final layer on these highlights on these uh, these higher areas of cloth. We may well go down to using a smaller brush. As I say, I just just wanted to give people. I just want to put some videos up occasionally where I'm showing how Gav goes about doing his uh, his painting. And like I say with all my videos, you you know pick and choose what you like out of them. You could say, Gav, don't like that system at all. You know, <laughs> this is how I do it. And as we say, great, fill your boots. You know, it's. Uh, I always think people get really messed up over painting, and it, when I say it's not worth it, it is worth it because it's. You know, I love painting figures. I know I paint them for a living, but. I, when I tell you guys I paint seven days a week, I do. As I say, I've got um, I've got different problems, and it helps me it helps me with them. Um, and you know, you, you you can get a vast amount of enjoyment out of painting, but at the same time, especially especially guys that are hardcore gamers and that, you know, you you know maybe painting isn't the main thing that that, that it's the game itself, you know. Um, so you don't want to torture yourself over painting. It's uh, it's supposed to be therapeutic, enjoying. <laughs> you know, when I when I hear guys you know beating themselves up um, over it, you know that's not the way to to go. So you know if there's bits you know shortcuts you can take that I'm you know if you think Gav you're going over the top there or something, you know and you can you can take a a different road, then fine, do it. Right, so again, I always apologise about the lighting. I've got one painting lamp above me, and my older one as a as an auxiliary lamp. Um, I'll just see if that makes any difference. Probably not. Um, but I will do as I progress. I will try and uh, splurge out and get um, some proper like YouTube video lamps, like the big stars use. Right, so that's our uh, our second highlight. And join me in a minute and we will get the third highlight on. Right guys, uh, now we're on to our, uh, what is it, third highlight? Second one, two, three. Yeah, I believe three. Um, now let's quickly diverge a bit. I just wanted to say something that's getting in focus. Come on, Gav. In fact, let's back off a bit. Right, um, when you pick your colours for these, all you're after, again, you don't have to have, I mean, there are Napoleonic sets, great, I mean, I've got one that's uh, for, that it's called the uh, Andrea Red set, and the figure on the front is a 54 or 75 mil um, uh, British Napoleonic officer, because obviously it's for the red jacket, but don't feel like you have to go down the road of, like you've just seen me use a Luftwaffe colour there from World War II, um, you know, it's whatever 
you think looks right on that figure or you can make to look right because you can add bits of different colors to if you haven't got a particular color play around with you know with your palette and and sometimes you'll come up with a you know what you want just mixing other colors into it yeah, but that's for a different video uh, what I was trying to say is though this is a 28 mil figure and we're using these colors at the moment and I'm about to put Seven zero dot eight nine zero uh, reflective green. Um, now I'm not one hundred percent sure yet, so we might actually have to change that over. But we're going to give it a go. Uh, what I was going to say is that this is a, a the commission I'm on at the moment. I'm painting a a load of ABs for people, and I can't really get those into shot very well. But that's using the same method of greens, going from the dark green with the black in, you know, then dark green. Uh, but where I diverge with, uh, although I've used the Luftwaffe green as a highlight, I've then gone straight up to olive green, slightly brighter. Uh, yes, they're wearing more or less the same darkish green jackets and well, obviously in this case trousers. But because he's a 15 stroke 18 mil figure, I just want him to pop that bit more. If that makes sense. And if I was doing, say, a bust or a 54 mil figure, you know, 75 mil, the darkness, lightness, whatever, it, it would change again probably, uh, because you're, you're dealing with something obviously a lot larger scale, and that's where your blending, glazing, and that comes in. So we've got that out of the way. Let's uh, let's have a go with our smaller brush. This is a double zero, I believe. It's well knackered at that tip loads of paint up the ferrule. They always say don't get paint up the ferrule and I've yet to find out how you stop that because even, what I do suggest as well is don't paint from a, da, a dry brush, you know, don't put a dry brush into your paint mix, uh, wet it first and that will stop the, the dry paint being sucked up the, up the ferrule a lot quicker. Because what I'm trying to get the, what I'm trying to achieve here is a dark green. We don't want this like the 18 mil figure with that bit of bling to it, because um, it just wouldn't look right. These guys weren't, you know, weren't wearing uh, a bright, a bright red, uh, a bright red, bright green uh, uniform. Uh, yes, it would, it would obviously fade, um, but. You know, it's it, it didn't fade to a like a lot brighter that you've just seen on that Italian. Now, this is more I would say for for the larger scale painting rather than knocking out large units. But again, wherever you've got your deepest crease, you want to be if you if you're going you're going up to your highlight. To the highest cloth area that's that's obviously creased up, you want to be painting away from the shadow if possible. So away from that darkest crease up to the top. I know it sounds, you know, it doesn't sound rocket science, but it what it'll do is it will um, it will put your paint thicker at that area, so giving you that that highlight. That's all probably as clear as mud, isn't it? But Well, the battery power is holding up at the moment, which is good. I have got two batteries. As I say, I've done a couple so far, and they've been, you know, I forget. To, <laughs> I, forget. I was doing one, um, uh, I think, on those red coats that I did. I actually held one back as a tutorial, uh, one of the officers, and uh, <laughs> it was a disaster from beginning to end. I was forgetting to press the record button, and I'd do a whole section and not record anything. So... Yeah, it, um, you know, I should have, I, I want to do more tutorials and that's not because I've got a big head and I'm saying, you know, you know, I'm some star painter. Just, I'm just, I enjoy painting, you know, I'm, you know, I enjoy looking at other people paint. Um, I enjoy, obviously you've seen, I'm starting to do some model kits. I love scale modeling or watching, well, not doing a lot at the moment, it's my first kit, but you know, I, I enjoy watching other people's scale models and how they, they do things. As I say on my, I think it's the introduction on my channel, well, the written introduction anyway, I just say I enjoy, I enjoy the world in miniature. Now, 
what I'm going to do now, the reason I leave the the highlights, the f uh, final highlight, sometimes like on this, this green, I might not highlight it at all after this, um, but I just find, and the same with horse flesh, I enjoy doing that. Um, when you've got all the other colours around them, you can just see what needs that extra final push, you know, just to just to make things look right. Now this uh, this reflective green has brought the, although it's ref it's it's obviously brought the highlights up. Um, it's also given it a slight. Um, I don't know what to say really, like a, a, a paleness to it, uh, which which I actually don't mind because that's like the faded look. There is another colour you could use, which is, as I bring it out my thing, um, there's other colours like uh, Gunship, I had to write that on because for some reason it wasn't on there, that's Gunship Green. Um, but uh, right, apart from the plume, Sorry about the dogs barking again. It's summertime in the UK. Um, I'm actually a winter person. Actually, I actually prefer the <laughs> no, Sado, but I am. <laughs> I actually prefer the winter rather than summer. I spent my whole life working outside until I became a figure painter. Right, right, guys. That's our green so far. Uh, we might apply a very last highlight and it will only be in certain places uh, as I say it's a bit hard looking at it although I'm not behind the camera the camera's above the, the figure it's still it is it is hard you know um, to actually get to uh, get the hang of this so uh, bear with me and we'll be back with the next section which I haven't decided on yet so give me five minutes to decide what we're painting next and we'll begin that bit right guys Gav's decided and it's going to be the bread bag, have a sack, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to go for a cold look to this one, cold cloth look. Uh, you can do them, you know, like obviously they got really dingy, they'd have greasy meat put in there, they'd you know, be thrown around the ground, you name it, um, you know, it, they were quite grubby. But I'm going to get, this is again, it's the trade off between what do you want to see, you know, war games figure. Uh, or, or you know something you know like a 54 mil figure or 75 mil figure. So we're going to go with a cold look to this, and our base colour. Let's get her in there. Sky grey, 07.989. I use this a lot for my my uh, base colours uh, on 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 things uh, that that want that I want to have a white. What I'm doing is actually painting my thumbnail because I just wanted to show you. Probably is not the best of. Uh, it's probably going to be quite opaque anyway, but slightly thicker than the green. Uh, believe me, it is. It, does, it doesn't look it, but it is. Are we in focus? I think. Believe we are. Always make sure you get on these undercuts, as I call them. You know, so where the the bread bag flap that I'm painting on the top of now make sure I always like to go straight underneath it with a f or anything that's got that like a ridge to it uh, just so that you don't miss it miss it out especially something that's got you know quite dug in deep you, know, you don't want to be proud of your figure and then and then realize that you haven't uh, you've completely missed like a a dense recess now this is where you're painting um, neat comes in because this is a light grey it won't cover a dark green so I'm hoping I haven't got too much uh, too much green on this haversack
It's all right, I'm just looking where the... Now this is where we get a bit torturous because we've got to... We've got to judge where it goes over his shoulder and when there's lots of straps like this you've got to pick them out the times I either I either pick a canteen strap out as the as the bread bag strap we're going to go to the smaller brush again knock a bit of paint off I do believe it's this one here but I may be wrong we shall soon see it's not a great deal to change it. Right, bear with me while I go out of shot because I'm just trying to see if this is underneath the underneath the arm. And there is one, but I think it might be it might be the strap to his uh, to his bayonet frog. Uh, we're gonna go we're gonna go with saying that's that's the the bread bag. Now all we've got to do is that's one problem painting with this um a smaller figure on a cork bung. Right, so we've gone under the arm arm with it, it probably need clearing up in a bit, but now what I should have said with the greens as well, and it'll apply to this grey if you wanted to do it, if you don't want to jump up the colours. Um, that I've done, then just obviously mix, you know, like two thirty. You know, once you've gone, say from, you could have gone uh, black green, uh, green, uh, dark green, uh, and then you could have gone the the Luftwaffe green mixed with the the dark green, if that makes sense. You know, and build your your, your highlights up. Uh, and I do for it depend. It really depends on the colour. Um, but again, all we're trying to do here is uh, show you guys the basics of. Uh, of how I paint. And I believe we've got a dirty big worm there that I've not noticed. That's a piece of casting. Uh, I'm going to paint over it as if it's not there. <laughs> It'll have to be taken off afterwards but this is a painting tutorial and I can't afford the time to cut it off with a scalpel and then reprime it and then uh, we'll be sat there with a big piece of flash. So That one's caught me out. It might not be but I do believe it is a casting worm that I haven't taken off. I said these were ad hoc videos. Uh, now, another good uh, colour which we're going to be using next on this haversack is Vallejo uh, Silver. Well, let's give a quick show. 70883 Silver Grey. And that should give you a, a nice uh, transition up to the, the white we're going to be using in a bit. Again, you could do a you know, uh, I'd, I'd normally do if I wanted. If I wanted not take such a jump up the highlights, then I'd, I'd um, do a quarter uh, silver grey into the sorry, a third silver grey and two thirds uh, the the sky grey. But we're going to go straight up to a a jump up to the this silver grey. Silver grey. It's it's one that you should keep in your armoury because it's good for. Doing base colours on, as I say, on straps and any any white details. Um, it's great for dry brushing over um, your earth colours, and it'll as long as you've got a really dry brush, it will it will give you a a brilliant um, highlight. Uh, if you're after a frosty ground look, uh, it can get a heavier highlight on that. Will will, will work great. Um, but if you just want to, it sounds a bit, you know, on dark brown putting a highlight of this uh, silver grey on, but it really works. And it also great, does, uh, again, a very, you know, decent dry brush. I say don't try putting it on too wet, but it will give you a cracking uh, uh, old, old wood look as well. But it is a great colour for uh, putting our next, uh, our next highlight on. Why is it when you want to do a video, everybody's dog starts barking? <laughs> it's the it's the law of the video maker. Press that press that record button, and every noise under the sun comes out. 
Right, bear with me and we'll be back in a moment. Right guys, I was just about to start painting it. I can't believe it, now we've got the tatters coming around picking up scrap iron. <laughs> oh, oh dear, you couldn't make it up. Right, uh, <laughs> Right, we're using uh, 344 white German tank crew from Panzer Aces series and uh, again all these Vallejo. I can't highly recommend this enough, sorry as we get out of shot yet again. Uh, this is my go-to paint for doing, if you see any of my cold whites, my, my straps that, you know, what I call cold, um, that's the colour I use. Uh, obviously there are different off-whites you can get, um, but that's, this is the one I use. It'll give you that slight grey, grey white look. Uh, I very rarely use a standard bright white um, because I know it's the shortcut for people that that you know you're doing any type of white things on, but on your on you know straps on on backpacks and things. I know it is a, a shortcut, but it looks a shortcut if you make sense. And it never, and what you tend to find is people that do it will often uh, put it on quite thick. And it, I don't know, it's just a painter in me. I, again, it, as I keep saying, you do what you want to do. But um, I just find using any type of off white, it doesn't have to be this one, um, it, it's a better way to go for me. I can't believe I'm painting over this worm as if it's, <laughs> as if it's part of the bag, but. Uh, you'll get the uh, you get the impression. Uh, when you're painting webbing straps, there isn't a lot we can do with this. Oh, I'll hold it up. So this guy, this is a problem doing it underneath the camera. Uh, this one, this one here. Um, there isn't a lot I can show you on that how to do, but you want to just leave like little creases in the in the webbing, so it's not just a complete one uh, sweep of the brush white. It, it, uh, again, it, it's I don't know. It just gives you that bit more artistic look if it's actually if it's actually um, got a bit of the the, the base colour showing through in parts. Well, that's Gaz's take on it anyway. Right guys, we're going for the uh, the one good thing, thing I must admit painting 95th rifles is dark green and black is your main colour. <laughs> so, so, you know, you can cover a lot of ground uh, uh, doing these. Um, obviously with these guys, 95th, so I've got to be careful, you know, I'm not an expert, but you could make these into the 60th with, uh, with red, with red uh, colours and whatever. Uh, just do your research, but I think, you know, you could just, you know, any of the light infantry regiments really that use the Baker rifle. Right, so next stop is Blacksville. Just give me one second, and we'll uh, we'll get onto the black. Right, guys. As I say in the song, black is black, but it isn't. Um, so we're going to go with two blacks here. Uh, first of all, the foundation of the mix is your standard. Let's see. Seven zero nine five zero black. Uh, again, cutting corners. You can just put your black straight on um, and do the usual grey highlights on it and things like that. Uh, but if you just want to lift your figures a bit more out of the ordinary, uh, you break your blacks up a bit. Uh, I will mix depending on what what I, I want out that particular figure. Um, this guy, for instance, what we're going to be doing, let's get my little grubby pointing stick again, his Chaco is going to be uh, that black with some brown mixed in. Brown can be whatever the colour of your choice, just don't put a lot in like I just have and I've had to put a load more black in to balance it out. Uh, can hardly read that, 70826 and that's German uh, camo medium brown, I use that for a heck of a lot of stuff. Uh, it's again, it's a go-to brown because you add a bit of black to it and you can soon darken it up if you don't want to have a whole range of brown colours. Uh, another go-to colour in your armoury 
is dark sea blue, brilliant for highlighting black, that's 70898. Um, so what we're going to do is use our larger brushes, we've got a larger surface area. Hopefully this doesn't look too brown, as I say I've gone way over the top. The problem is at this time of year the colours when it's warm are quite viscous and they uh, and they flood out the bottle from time to time, which this one just has. And it's clipped my green colour <laughs> and I'm now fighting time to uh, to get this painted before the green merges in with the brown. Because <laughs> actually you can use green to highlight black as well. Um, as I say, black is definitely not black. Um, yeah, again, with painting war games figures, and you say, you know, how far do you really want to go? And again, that's up to you guys, really. Um, I just like to think I've done, you know, I can look at a figure and say, yeah, I've done this, I've done that. You know, I'm happy that I've, I've tried to make it look slightly better. It's a bit like doing a scale model when the guys, you know, add their bits of resin and photo etch brass on and things like that. In this case, it's just, you know, this guy is a lot of dark green and a lot of black. So what we want to do is just slightly, slightly change those those tones. The the only the only drawback, yes, and you know, again, I'm, I'm answering people's ripped torts before they've said them. Uh, you put your matte paint, your matte um, varnish on, sorry, and you know, can you tell? Um, I'll leave that to you guys. Probably can't tell under the, the video camera so much. A second, a second layer on this. Now I won't be obviously editing and editing anything out or into this. I might just put an intro at the beginning with my usual fat head trying to uh, <laughs> try to get the camera camera around all my chins. Um, but we've given, we've put some camo brown in this and it's just, oh, we ain't going to really see under my lights really are we, but it will give it a slightly different look than just the, the jet black, because what you can do is, um, if you've got something that's got a lot of, um, so I'm just trying to get under this peak here guys, so I could be all over the shop with the camera, um, if you've got something with a lot of creases in, then uh, you can go back to using your your basic black as your darkest uh, your darkest shadow area. I think I've gone all under there. I only use a smaller brush to that, so I'll probably plaster black all over his face. So I'm going to go back and give him a second coat all the way around afterwards with that. Once it's when I work on these other areas, um, boots are going to. Boots have got the gaiters on, the usual uh, uh, low gaiters. We're going to do the boot, the boot area uh, in the same as the, the same as the shako. It's important as well, um, don't keep your paint lingering on your brush too long, especially in warm conditions. Obviously it's never too warm in the UK but they still they still dry out around the rest of the world. I know obviously your temperatures are <laughs> a lot worse than ours. What we're going to do with the gaiters is do the, uh, the, the boots are going to be this, uh, this brown look and then the co colour that we're going to use on the, the backpack we will use on the, the gator itself. And we're also going to use it just to, uh, we're going to use it on the on the cartridge box as well. 
because that's going to be having some uh, some brown highlights on as well where we've got some worn leather look Quite often these cartridge boxes are obviously get knocked about and the the black dye, whatever they were using, um, would show, you know, chip off and and show the the leather and the wood underneath. Right, I believe I've got it all. I might be able to just do one more sweep under that cartridge box. Right, so that's our, uh, our black and brown mix. Now we're going to go for my other mix. Let me just give it another stir as it's been waiting a while. This is the same black but it's got the dark sea blue in. And we're going to use that. On the cover of our, which is like a, if I believe it's a tarred. Tarred cover. Um, over a wooden frame. And that tarry look tends to, I mean again it can have blues, purples, browns in it, but uh, we're going to say anyway for this for this guy it's got the blue look to it. Again it's not, when I say a blue look it's not it's not blue but it's just, it, it just takes that, hopefully anyway, and like we say after an application or two of, of varnish it, it does lose a bit of it, but as I say I know I've done it so that's what matters. Just having a bit of pride in what you're doing, really. You know what you, if you want to have a particular look to your figure, you go ahead and do it. Um, you might be the only one that ever notices it's there, but you know it's there, and that's what counts. Oh, we've got to get under. I'll swap to, I'll swap to my smaller brush. Just. I mean, dangerous slopping paint. I actually paint with a small brush quite often. Um, yeah, I paint 18 mils a lot as well, uh, but which is why these smaller brushes get knocked about quicker than the others. Um, but I've just, I don't know, I've just always enjoyed painting with a smaller brush. It, uh, it won't, it, you know, obviously they always say paint with a larger brush, it'll speed up things, it probably does. As I say, I'm in a, I'm in a, a slow, uh, slow painter by choice, so it doesn't really bother me. Right, we're going to give this, the base layer to these, to these gaiters. And now we've got all the kids back as well, the little kids. <laughs> They're throwing their ten penneth in as well. Steven Spielberg and all those big, big honcho directors and producers, they don't have to put up with this. They just shut the street off and say, hey, Gav's doing a video, everyone shut up. And I've just said all that and I've just checked to make sure I am recording. <laughs> because as I say, it's not the first time I've... Uh, I've done a load on the video and not to not f uh, realise we've uh, I haven't pressed the uh, record button. Now he's got uh, brown cuffs. Oh, sorry, brown black cuffs and uh, collar. And I'm going to go with the the black with the uh, deep dark sea blue in. Now 
I've just got to check once I've done this first bit and washed my brush off. I just need to check that uh, on the I've got I pulled finally pulled the figure out of the box um, of other 95th rifles. Uh, just to make sure. I think he's got slightly yeah he's got pointed con uh, cuff so we need to be going up slightly. Although against this dark green until you actually put the uh, and I think it goes up to the bottom of the uh, of the second button. I might be wrong. It's been a while since I've done 95th. It stand out a bit more when it's got the the white piping around it. Obviously. Um, It's a bit too uh, a bit of water on the ferrule there. What you want to do if you if you ever do get like a blob of water run down the, the metal ferrule and then obviously all over your all over your figure that you're, you're painting, uh, uh, keep a moist brush a brush that's been you know put in some water but dried off, or quickly use the same brush and dry it off. Well, not dry it off, but but like you know, get it on your paper towel, and it'll be you'll be surprised how quick you can suck up the spent the spent uh, watery paint. Or if you do an overspill uh, with your paintbrush, which often happens to me, uh, again use that same method, and it, you'll be surprised how much paint it'll, you can actually suck up and then quickly get back on there with some water on your brush and scrub it around a bit. Sometimes, it, you know, on, especially on lighter colours, it, it, if you put a darker colour on it, you know, you, sometimes you want to hide into nothing and you've got to repaint that area, but it'll often save you doing that. Okay, we're trying to get this very slight rise up to the buttons here. I know you can't see them very well. We'll get up to the uh, get up to the collar. Again, that will have piping round when we when we're through. Shall we get around that back there so we've got no primer showing? The primer, by the way, I never did mention, uh, it's um, from a rattle can uh, in the UK. It's from Halfords, Halfords Primer. Uh, I do tend to find it sticks really well. Uh, problem is you can never get to all the areas and I end up touching it up with uh, Vallejo, um, Vallejo Primer. You know, it's that plasticized one. I'm not a huge fan of it, but it, you know, it does for just getting on a brush and sticking it in. In areas, just make sure you blow on it to blow the air bubbles out. What we'll do is black straps now, and the tufts are also black on this guy, I believe. But I'll just check it again just to make sure. Uh, the rifle sling is also black, but we will leave that for now uh, until we've actually painted the the rifle. It's where I'm going cross-eyed now and I can't see. That's our main strap. You've got a little line that runs up on the top of the strap. Just see it, the grey. Uh, and I believe that's down to the it's is it the pick that they uh the scour out the the priming pan with. I believe that's what it is. And let's just see bits of primer underneath.
as I say there's a lot of dark colours in here um, and you just have to and you can't even it's not it's not even um, it's not you, you can't always highlight them fantastically well because there's not a lot to play with and we've just got the cap box down here percussion caps or flints I'm sorry percussion caps or flints now see I'm talking see I'm I paint a load of Napoleonics but I'm not a Napoleonic um, I'm, I can't call myself a Napoleonic buff if that makes sense a belt under there somewhere let's just hope I'm painting the right bit <laughs> Painting black black onto dark uh, dark green is not always easy. Uh, as I say, the the sling of the rifle, or you might call it the strap, but in the army we call it the sling. The sling here, we'll leave that till we till we've uh, we've actually um, painted the rifle, the the wood on the rifle itself. So I believe I'm just going to go around that shako again. Give me a larger brush. It's already got a, a quite a pleasing. Uh, brownie black look to it which I'm happy with peaks would often be leather but I'm not going to differentiate any more on, on that, unlike the felt of the, the Shako itself. What we're going to... Let me just check my other figure. Yeah, so I think what we'll actually do is we'll paint over this we'll paint over this uh, chain here that runs runs down the, uh, the strap and we'll paint where it comes down to at the bottom here which I'll show you in a bit just so it gives us a black backing to put um, some metallic on alright join me in a minute guys and we'll be doing some more black highlighting <laughs> 